Hello everyone, welcome to Lukman IS. Today we are going to have the, the daily current affairs session dated uh, 24th of March 2023. So let us quickly look into those topics that are important for UPSC civil services examination of 2023. So let's quickly look into these articles one by one. So the first topic is based on National Green Tribunal. Okay. So we are going to understand about National Green Tribunal and the recent directions okay national green tribunal has issued direction to one specific authority okay so we are going to learn about that direction also so the main heading is national green tribunal so we need to understand what is this body okay national green tribunal is a statutory body what do we mean by this the national green tribunal has been established under an act which is known as ngt act national green tribunal act 2010 so since it has been established under a existing act so that's why it is known as a statutory body and the decisions that are taken by national green tribunal are based on principles of natural justice okay the decisions of national green tribunal are based on principles of natural justice okay principle of natural justice so national green tribunal is not okay uh, like is not bound by the civil procedures okay by the civil procedures okay so that's why the principles uh, like decisions taken by ngt are based on principles of natural justice so let us talk about the recent highlights recent developments related to ngt so what ngt has done the national green tribunal has directed the rajasthan state pollution control board okay in short it is known as rspcb rajasthan state pollution control board to recover environmental compensation from Bhilwada Municipal Corporation for its failure to take action to remedy the pollution of River Kothari. Okay. So there is a river, name of the river is River Kothari. It is located in Rajasthan and NGT has directed the Rajasthan State Pollution Control Board to recover the compensation, the environmental compensation from this municipal corporation which is Bilwada Municipal Corporation because this municipal corporation uh, has failed to take remedy, uh, remedial action for I mean like uh, you know uh, cleaning the pollution from river Kothari. Okay. So this was the highlight on the basis of which this particular thing was in news. So now let us talk about river Kothari where, where does this river originate from and where it goes. Okay. So this river Kothari arises from Raj Samad district of Rajasthan. Okay. So Raj Saman district is a district of Rajasthan and this river, river Kothari originates from there, arises from there. Okay. So source is Aravali hills near Devgarh, Raj Samant, Rajasthan. Okay. Source of the river is Aravali hills near Devgarh. Okay. In this particular district, which is Raj Saman district. It is one of the left bank tributaries of Bansa, uh, Banas river okay so uh, you know like if we have a, if we have a river like this okay so river can have you know some tributaries distributaries etc okay so let's say a river is flowing let's say a river is flowing and if you know uh, the water of this river is aided by some other uh, you know uh, like a small rivers so these small rivers are known as tributaries of the large river okay these are known as tributaries of the large river okay tributaries okay so what is uh, the name of the tributary so this is uh, it is one of the left bank tributaries of Banas river okay so this uh, this Kothari river is left bank tributary let's say this is Banas river the uh, main one then Kothari river is one of the let's say like you know this particular tributary it is a left bank tributary left bank means from the left side it it, it adds water to the Banas river okay this river joins the river Banas at Nandrai in Koti Tehsil. Okay, so we don't need to go into the detail about the, I mean, like, you know, uh, river bank, river tributary, and distributaries of this river, but we need to understand the recent happenings. Okay, you need to remember where is River Kothari located. It is like, you know, it is there in the state of Rajasthan in Devgarh, Rajasthan district. And this river is a left bank tributary of Barnas river. That's also an important information. The Mija dam on the Kothari river provides drinking water to Bhilwara district. Okay. Most open wells in villages near Kothari 
river which flows along the industrial belt had chromium, lead, iron, zinc and sodium above norms set by the Bureau of Indian Standards. Okay. So these, uh, the, this particular river has, I mean like, you know, poisoned water. So that's why, that's why the National Green Tribunal has asked the state uh, state Pollution Control Board, Rajasthan State Pollution Control Board to recover the amount, recover the compensation from the Bilwada Municipal Corporation, uh, Municipal Council because they were unable to, uh, you know, take remedy action for, uh, for uh, controlling the pollution in the river, which is River Kothari. Okay, so that's why this is an important news item. You can consider this to be a news that is relevant for geography section and also you need to learn about National Green Tribunal. National Green Tribunal has been set up as a speedy court that can take uh, let's say decisions on a speedier uh, on a speedier basis related to environmental uh, you know uh, cases environmental issues. So that was the thing. Now we will discuss about another topic this is uh, this uh, the main topic is National Security Act. We will understand about National Security Act through this article, okay? Through this article, we will learn what is National Security Act. We will understand the history of development of National Security Act. And also we will understand about recent highlights, uh, like why it was recently in news. We will understand about recent highlights also with reference to the National Security Act, okay? So why it was in news? Because recently one person, I mean like his name is Amrit Pal Singh, okay? So Amrit Pal Singh is a Sikh leader actually like he was uh, like you know proposing his ideas for uh, for having Khalistan okay so Khalistani movement is going on and it has been going on for, for a long time okay so he has preached something like you know uh, that the government of India has considered to be against the national security against the interest of India so that's why I mean like they have invoked National Security Act against Mr. Amrit Pal Singh. Okay, what is uh, so? What is the recent highlight? The recent highlight is the National Security Act has been invoked in the cases of self-styled Sikh preacher and on the run Waris Punjabi. Okay, Waris Punjabi Chief Amrit Pal Singh. Okay, so National Security Act has been invoked against him. So we need to understand about National Security Act. We need to understand about preventive detention law as well. Okay, so let us understand about National Security Act. So National Security Act is a preventive detention law. Okay, means like it provides for preventive detention. We will also understand about preventive detention in detail. Okay, it allows for detention of alleged individual for months if authorities are satisfied that a person is a threat to national security or law and order. Preventive detention is basically detention of a person without trial to prevent him or her from committing a crime. It was enacted in 1980 during the Indira Gandhi government. Okay. So now let us understand about preventive detention. When we see the constitution of India in constitution of India under article 22 of the constitution of India, it mentions about detention. It mentions about detention. Article 22 of the Constitution of India mentions about detention and in this uh, in this article they have mentioned about two types of detention. One type of detention is known as punitive detention. Okay. One is punitive detention. Other type of detention is known as preventive detention. Okay. The second type of detention is known as preventive detention. Now let us understand the difference between punitive detention and preventive detention. Punitive detention means let's say a person has committed some crime and he uh, trial has happened in a court of law and court of law has given a verdict against that person and court of, court of law has held that person guilty of committing an offense. Okay, And that court asks the authorities to send this person in jail, in judicial custody. Okay, That is known as punitive detention means like we are punishing someone for committing a crime and this crime has been proved in a court of law and court of law gives like you know uh, gives the judgment in favor of putting that person in in jail okay that is known as punitive detention and article 22 of the constitution of india also talks about preventive detention in case of preventive detention what happens 
that a person has not actually committed the crime he is suspected of committing a crime means the authorities are of the view that this person can commit a crime in the near future okay so the authorities can detain him can take him into custody under preventive detention law so what happens this person has not actually committed the crime he may commit the crime this is the uh, this is the logic this is the idea this is the suspect i mean like you know the authorities are suspecting that that person is about to commit a crime so authorities detain him authorities take him into custody once authorities take him into custody then he is considered to be under preventive detention okay under preventive detention that person can be kept in custody um, can be kept in custody for at most 3 months okay for 3 months the authorities can keep him under detention for 3 months and if they want to keep him in detention beyond 3 months in that case a committee ha has to be established that committee will comprise of the sitting judge of a high court or a retired judge of a high court or let's say a person who is eligible to be appointed as a judge of the high court and that committee will have multiple members and if that committee is in the favor that this person can be kept under preventive detention for longer then he can be kept in preventive detention for longer again after 3 months like you know another committee has to give its opinion whether this person can be kept in preventive detention or not okay so this is the case okay in preventive detention the person has not actually committed a crime that amounts to putting him into jail but authorities are suspecting that this person can commit a crime that's why they are, they take him into custody okay that is known as preventive detention there are multiple grounds of arresting someone under preventive detention we will discuss about those grounds also what are the grounds under which a person can be taken into custody a person can be put behind the bars under preventive detention laws these grounds are mentioned over here we are going to discuss about these grounds okay so one of the ground is it can be invoked to prevent a person from acting in any manner which is prejudicial to the defense of india relations of india with foreign powers or the security of india these are the three grounds one thing is like uh, that person can act in any act in any manner that is prejudicial to the defense of india prejudicial to the defense of an india or that is prejudicial to the relation of india with foreign powers or the security of india these are the three grounds on which a person can be uh, you know put behind the bars under preventive detention law this is one thing it can also be applied it can also be applied to a person from acting in any manner prejudicial to the maintenance of supplies and services essential to the community let's say a person is like you know there are some essential services that needs to be served to a community but a person is stopping from happening it okay in that case also that person can be put behind the bars under preventive detention law and preventive detention i mean like it's remedial measures and what is preventive detention all of it is mentioned under article 22 of the constitution of india remember article 22 comes under the fundamental rights so the person also has fundamental rights okay means like you know he has rights okay to be heard to be given let's say like uh, to be given reason why he is uh, put behind the bars okay so those clauses are there okay that's a matter of let's say more interpretation of article 22 so we will limit our understanding we will limit our let's say discussion to this thing itself and understanding about differences between pre uh, preventive and punitive detention and also the grounds under which a person can be detained under the preventive detention laws okay now after this now let us understand what is the history of what is the history of preventive detention law okay what is the history like how the preventive detention law came into being okay so like before this preventive detention the present pre preventive detention came into being we had another uh, you know similar forms of preventive detention law even when india was under colonial powers i mean like india was a colony of let's say british british government okay so the first such law in 1818 1818's bengal regulation act 
okay which enables the government to arrest anyone for defense or for maintaining public order without giving person any legal remedies okay so 1818 Bang bengal regulation act had the provision similar to preventive detention law so this was one of the first such such laws in this regard okay so this is one of the history uh, like you know facts related to history apart from this there are other facts also in 1919 roulette uh, act was passed and after independence the government enacted the preventive detention act 1950 which expired in 1969 okay after 90 years it uh, 19 years it, it expired in 1971 we had another similar law which is MISA maintenance of internal security act 1971 that was enacted which gave unlimited powers to the government and law enforcement bodies it was then repealed in 1977 repeal means like this law was uh, you know abrogated this law was nullified okay it was repealed then in 1980 national security act was enacted the present act that is in place it is 1980 national security act okay now let us discuss about constitutional provisions related to preventive detention law what are the constitutional provisions so if we talk about constitutional provisions article 22 clause 3 sub clause b of the constitution of india allows for preventive detention and restriction on personal liberty for reasons of the state security and public order and article 22 clause 4 states that no law providing for preventive detention shall authorize the detention of a person for a longer period than three months okay for a longer period than three months unless an advisory board reports sufficient causes for extension of detention okay so what is the maximum period uh, to which a person can be kept under preventive detention it is three months this is mentioned under article 22 clause 4 of the constitution of india okay article 22 clause 4 gives a time frame of three months that like you know a person can be kept under preventive detention for a period of three months and if three months passes in that case to keep that person in preventive detention they have to take they have to you know create an advisory board and that advisory board should report sufficient cause okay for extension of preventive detention for that person okay so this is related to preventive detention now let us understand about uh, you know period of detention so the article 22 of the constitution of india talks about three months at most three months and an individual can be detained without a charge for maximum of 12 months maximum of 12 months means after taking opinion from the advisory board like you know three months he has been kept without giving any let's say right to that person to appear before a court of law or let's say like you know to have a lawyer of his choice to defend him right three months then like you know the board advisory board has to give opinion so similarly it can go up to 12 months okay the detained person can be held for 10 to 12 days in special circumstances without being told the charges against them the detention can be further exp extended by the state if it finds fresh evidence for the same okay now if if we talk about appeal against detention a detained person can appeal before a high court advisory board but they are not allowed a lawyer during the trial okay this is again i mean like a, a provision that's that's not so good for the person who has been detained okay now <coughs> so having understood about the national security act now let us understand about the fight against tuberculosis okay tuberculosis you know tb tb is a kind of disease that is spreads from person to person like you know it, it it can be considered as a communicable disease i mean like a person who is affected by tb if he sneezes if he coughs then like if another person contacts him so that person may also get affected by tb tuberculosis okay so we will understand about tuberculosis we will understand about highlight why tuberculosis is in news and also we will understand about like you know various measures that the that the world has taken to eliminate or you know reduce tb to take control of the disease tb okay so let us understand about the highlight why why this particular article is in news 
so here the fight against tuberculosis has been ongoing for over 30 years since it was declared a global health emergency yet the goal of ending tb by 2030 is still uncertain okay now here they are saying that tb has been declared as a global health emergency by the world health organization okay the world health organization has declared tb tuberculosis as global health emergency when in 1993 itself okay it's been 30 years that tb has been declared as a global health emergency however 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 like you know we have not yet, yet been able to eliminate tb and there is a goal also there is a goal of eliminating tb by ending tb by 2030 and achieving that goal also seems to be uncertain for the world okay why it seems to be uncertain we are going to understand through this article okay the fight against tb needs a renewed focus on three key areas number one vaccine development number two newer therapeutic agents and number three improved diagnostics to meet the goal of ending tb by 2030 okay if you want to eliminate tuberculosis if you want to eliminate tb we need to ident uh, we need to focus on three key areas one of the key area is development of vaccine we need to develop vaccine second key area is we need to bring newer therapeutic agents means like we need to have newer ways of let's say eliminating tb vaccine is one of the way there can be you know different ways of let's say like you know tackling tb third thing is like we should focus on improved diagnostics diagnostics means we should be focusing more on how to uh, like how to identify that a person is affected by tb so the testing diagnosis should be done properly okay properly to meet the goal of ending tb by 2030 okay so let us understand about the history related to tb and how the world has I any mean, progressed in let's say tackling tb in 1993 the world health organization declared tb a global health emergency and in 1993 world development report stated that tb treatment for adults was the best buy among all developmental interventions since then the global response to tb has been slow and lacks urgency i mean like in 1993 the world health organization has declared that tb is a like you know global health emergency 1993 everybody was uh, very active in tackling tb but after then like you know uh, like people have not taken this uh, taken this disease to uh, you know with urgency like you know uh, to eliminate tb so now uh, you know people have created a global fund also the global fund to fight AIDS TB and malaria okay so a global fund was created to fight these diseases AIDS TB and malaria was created in response to call to action against TB at G7 summit in Okinawa Japan in 2001 so this global fund was created in 2001 and we are in 2023 it's been 22 years that this global fund was created the global fund became single largest channel of additional funding by global tb control for global tb control however it faces constraints due to zero sum games uh, from donor const uh, constituents and competition between the three diseases it finances okay so global fund was created in 2001 where like you know uh, like people would fund for eliminating AIDS, TB and malaria for tackling these three diseases. So there is a competition between these three diseases itself from the same fund. Okay, so that's why proper address has not been given, proper redressal has not been, I mean like you know given to let's say eliminating TB. This is the thing. Now there, uh, there is one more partnership, this is known as Stop TB Partnership. Okay, Stop TB Partnership one thing we understood about global fund global fund was created in 2001 second is stop tb partnership so the stop tb partnership was constituted to mobilize and marshal a desperate set of actors towards the goal of ending tb it has been adapting to changes such as using molecular diagnostic tools developed to respond bioterrorism to diagnose tb and using social safety programs to address poverty drivers of TB epidemic 
So now let us understand what is tuberculosis. What is tuberculosis? Tuberculosis is, is a infectious disease. Okay, it is an infectious disease which is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. It is caused by bacteria. Okay, TB is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis which is a bacteria. Okay, TB is a bacterial disease. It mainly affects the lungs but can affect other parts of the body such as kidney, spine and brain. Okay, mainly it affects fefra, lung. But it can also affect kidneys, spine and brain. Aapke dimaag ko bhi asar kar sakta hai TB. TB spreads through the air when a person with active TB disease in the lung or throat coughs, sneezes or speaks. Okay, if someone is coughing, if someone is sneezing, if someone is speaking, who is already affected by active TB, then like he can spread TB through his sneeze or through his mouth to the other person. Okay. Symptoms of TB include coughing that, la that lasts for three or more weeks, chest pain, coughing, uh, like you know, coughing up blood, fatigue, fever, and weight loss. TB can be treated with antibiotics. Okay, TB can be treated with antibiotics. There are antibiotics uh, also, but there are concerns also. Uh, there is, I mean, like you know, uh, rising instances of anti. Uh, drug resistant forms i mean like you know the uh, people who are affected by tb so like if they keep on having antibiotics then uh, the body stops responding to antibiotics okay so like you know uh, drug resistant bacteria i mean like you know they develop in the body and like you know uh, to address that concern is also a big threat okay apart from this we need to understand like if we are developing any kind of uh, let's say medicine or we are thinking of curing any kind of me medicine we need to focus on three areas the first area for the drug should be like uh, we see the safety of the drug safety should be the first concern the second concern should be to see the efficacy of the drug efficacy means how well this particular drug is able to cure or treat for the disease third thing that we look for is affordability of the drug is affordability of the drug okay so first thing that we look is safety second is efficacy third is affordability okay so if we want to have an effective treatment against any disease we need to focus on whether the drug that is being developed whether the medicine that is being developed is safe or not for human consumption second is like how efficient it is to treat the disease third is like we need to make it affordable so that uh, so that anyone who is affected by the disease can afford to buy the uh, medicine for it okay safety efficacy and affordability are three most important parameters when it comes to like you know uh, uh, like making uh, making medicine for for treating some kind of disease so what are the areas that needs attention what are the areas that needs attention one of the area is vaccine development. The development of an adult TB vaccine in the first area needs urgent attention. The current vaccine, the vaccine that we are now using, this vaccine is about 100 years old. So we need to develop more vaccines, new type of vaccine that is, uh, that is uh, you know, more uh, effective against TB, tuberculosis, okay? So COVID-19 de uh, vaccine development provides, uh, process provides insight into accelerating the process. So during COVID-19, we all have been affected in one or other way. That time the entire world was walking towards developing vaccines. Okay, different countries have come up with different varieties of vaccines that were effective against SARS-CoV, okay, means uh, SARS-COVID, uh, okay, COVID-19. SARS means severe uh, severely acute okay uh, respiratory syndrome okay sars cov uh, so this is vaccine development should be given importance if you want to treat uh, you know tb patients second is we need to bring newer therapeutic agents for tb i mean like we should focus on developing uh, newer ways newer techniques of treating tb third thing okay uh, third is improved diagnostics AI assisted handled radiology and passive surveillance of cough sounds 
can revolutionize, uh, can revolutionize TB diagnosis. So we should also focus on how to diagnose TB, how to identify that a person is affected by TB. So here in this article, the author has suggested that like we can use the technique uh, tool which are AI assisted. AI means artificial intelligence assisted. Okay. So this is the thing. So with this, we will move to the next topic. Okay. This topic is again important. So we will understand about what is chat GP, uh, GPT-4 and how it is different from chat GPT. Now let us understand what is GPT. GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer. Okay. GPT stands for, I'll be writing here, GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained transformer okay gpt stands for generative pre-trained transformer so this is a language model gpt is a language model it is based on artificial intelligence and machine learning okay neural networks work over here okay so so this is an artificial intelligence system which is a chat bot here you can ask questions it is going to give you answers okay and like it, it can generate answers okay it can generate answers in a way that human beings think and you know uh, think and like you know give answers to you so this is uh, chat gpt generally chat gpt now chat gpt this particular uh, thing is based on gpt 3.5 okay so gpt 3.5 is is a standard that they have developed and this gpt 4 has been developed by a company which is named as open ai OpenAI. OpenAI is the name of the company that has developed GPT-4 and this company is being funded by many big big players like Microsoft and Microsoft also has a operating system with them which is known as Bing, B-I-N-G, Bing operating system. That Bing operating system also uses GPT to, you know, it has a chat feature that uses GPT for generating answers for the questions that you type, okay. So this is chat GPT now uh, so we have understood about chat GPT now let us understand how GPT-4 is different from chat GPT chat GPT was based on uh, you know the version 3.5 then GPT-4 like you know here in chat GPT you could only ask questions in textual form means like you you need to input your question in the form of text you need to type it is going to give you answer in the form of text itself right but GPT-4 here it can also it can also receive questions it can also receive information through images you can give uh, give an image as an input over here and it is going to generate response generate response by analyzing the image okay by analyzing the image so this is the difference between chat GPT and GPT-4 okay it can also process images okay it can process images it is much faster than chat GPT. It has more capacity of uh, generating more words. Okay, means like let's say chat GPT could generate about 2500 words. It can generate about 8000 words. Okay, so the capacity has increased, efficiency has increased and the quality of answers that it generates that has also increased with GPT-4. As of now, GPT-4 is available only to certain companies that have like uh, tied up with OpenAI, but soon they can also release it for the open public. Okay, they can release it for public. So this is the basic difference between them, uh, GPT-4 and chat GPT. So it's, it's a kind of chatbot where like you can interact, you can ask questions, it will give answers. Chat GPT gives answers in, uh, you know, text format. GPT-4 like you know you can give input as um, input uh, like image inputs also it can process the image input and, and it is going to give you output it is going to give you answers okay so that's the thing okay so what you can do is like you can read this uh, this topic we will share this information with you okay you can read this topic so chat GPT is not yet uh, like you know GPT-4 is not yet available to public at large only for research purposes it has been made available to certain uh, companies and all so they are using it okay 
but it is not available to the public at large they may release it you know by the end of march so this is the thing now with this like we will move to another topic and this topic is also important here we are going to talk about sealed cover jurisprudence okay we will understand about what do we mean by sealed cover jurisprudence uh, when it comes to the supreme court of india or high courts in a court of law okay so let us understand the topic in detail then we will understand about sealed cover jurisprudence what do we mean by this okay so in OROP OROP stands for one rank one pension scheme okay so you might be knowing that like you know armed forces personals defense forces personals when they retire they receive pension but that pension amount was so low that like people have approached the court of law okay uh, seeking some remedy and also the pension that was being given that varied from person to person from rank to rank okay so there were multiple deformities in it then the government came up with one rank one pension means like if a person has retired from a specific rank no matter what was the uh, let's say like how, how how many years he has served or like you know there were multiple things uh, considerations so the pension amount was decided based on the rank of the person one rank one pension case okay so like you know people have filed cases against that this particular scheme also this particular scheme of the government so recently the supreme court of india was hearing a case you know against the one rank one pension scheme and in that case the chief justice of india justice dy chandrachud okay dy justice dhananjay okay dy chandrachud he refused to accept sealed cover okay he refused to accept uh, information from the government in a sealed cover and we are going to understand why did he refuse to receive the information in sealed cover okay so we are going to understand it you can read the information i mean like you know that is there in the article but like i will give you a quick brief about it okay so what happens let's say okay let's say there is a court of law one party which is a grief party means like a party that files a case against a party okay means like the respondent one is the appellant other is respondent so in this case the appellants were the armed forces personals defense personals who should receive pension under one rank one pension scheme they had filed a case against the government of india right in the supreme court of india so supreme court of india was hearing the case and supreme court of india has asked for information from the respondent from the government but the government uh, like you know they thought like you know we will not give the information in open court we will give the information to the court in a sealed cover okay so that the judges can themselves read and they can give a decision they can like give a verdict on this so the government the counsel from the government i mean like they have given they have given the information in, in a sealed cover to the chief justice of india then the chief justice of india has refused to take the information in a sealed cover the chief justice of india said that we want to hear your stand in an open court so that the appellant so that the uh, aggrieved person can also hear like you know your stand on this why did he did he do so there are multiple reasons the chief justice of india has cited two specific reason why they have uh, you know denied you know, accepting the information from the government in a sealed cover one of the one of the reason that that the chief justice of india has cited is that he has cited that if you give us information in a sealed cover and after reading the information if we give a verdict either in favor of them or against them still like you know there will be opaqueness in the in the jurisprudence in the in the overall case because they will not be knowing on what grounds we have given this particular judgment or verdict okay uh, based on which information which on which based on which facts we have given this information uh, this verdict so it will reduce their ability to challenge the decision of the court in the court itself okay let's consider i as a judge if i take information from you in a sealed cover and if i give a verdict in this case it can be in favor of him or you but like that person is not getting the proper information 
that we are receiving from you and like you know that person will not be having sufficient grounds or sufficient you know uh, grounds to challenge the verdict of the court okay so that was one of the reason that was cited by the chief justice of india the other reason that was cited by the chief justice of india is that like you know it promotes a culture of opaqueness it promotes a culture of let's say uh, you know uh, culture of secrecy okay it promotes a culture of opaqueness it promotes a culture of secrecy and transparency is not given due weight and and it also like you know deters the credibility of the courts of law it also like you know like uh, people are not aware like on what facts we have taken the decision so that's why the chief justice of india did not receive the information from the government in a sealed cover these were the two i mean grounds on which like you know the chief justice of india has uh, like has cancelled the plea of the government to take the information in a sealed cover but like is it the first case where the chief justice of india or the judges from the supreme court has uh, you know denied the thing this is not the first case there have been multiple instances where they have denied receiving the receiving the information in a sealed cover and also there have been many cases where the government of india has uh, sorry where the court of law the courts have received the information in a sealed cover and there are grounds also why they receive the information in a sealed cover there are multiple grounds on one ground is the secrecy of the let's say aggrieved person secrecy means let's consider the aggrieved person is a victim of a sexual offense okay some sexual uh, the victim is an uh, uh, like uh, the victim is uh, let's say is is aggrieved party in a sexual offense so like if this thing is discussed in a court of law then that will i mean like you know uh, like that will reveal the identity of the victim and that's not good for the victim okay so that's why the courts may receive the information in sealed cover they, uh, this is one case other cases like you know for the let's say like government of india has official secrets act so if something is categorized as secret information for the government that cannot be brought you know in the public domain so that can also be i mean like you know those information can also be received by the court of law in a sealed cover so there are multiple instances also where the courts of law have received the information okay in a sealed cover okay so let's discuss about those cases okay quickly where the information okay so one of the cases in rafael case in rafael aircraft case the court accepted the government's argument uh, that the matter pertained to the official secrets act so they have received the information in a sealed cover then while refusing to stay arrest of activist held in bhima koregao case it relied on evidence submitted by the maharashtra police in a sealed envelope and also in nrc exercise nrc okay national registers for citizen in nrc exercise in assam which led to about 19 lakh citizens being excluded from the list the apex court sought details from nrc coordinator in a sealed cover with neither the government nor the affected parties being allowed to look at them okay a case involving corruption allegation against former cbi director alok alok verma the court has insisted for receiving the information in a sealed cover because they want to maintain the i mean like you know they want to maintain the credibility of the central vigilance commission or credibility of the cbi simply so there have been multiple cases where the courts have received the information in a sealed cover and for that there are explanations as well why the information has been received in sealed cover and now they have not received the information in sealed cover for that also the chief justice of india has given his opinion that like you know it will lead to a culture of opaqueness where the jurisprudence will be undermined okay and also the aggrieved party they will not have sufficient grounds to i mean like you know uh, to appeal against the verdict of the court also so these are the grounds on which like you know on which uh, the issue of sealed cover jurisprudence have been discussed in detail i hope you found the information to be very insightful 
and helpful for your preparation for UPSC civil services examination. If you have any questions, do let us know. We will uh, try to give you answer, uh, answer or, and like clarify your doubts. And so like, you know, these are some of the programs that we are running. One of the program is Tucker All India Free PT Mock Test. So we are conducting this free PT mock test. All of you who are preparing for UPSC CSE 2023 and willing or thinking of appearing in this upcoming prelims exam, you can attend this particular test to see where your preparation stands, how ready you are to face the UPSC preliminary examination. You will receive an all India rank. This exam is going to be conducted in online and offline mode. Okay, and top rankers, one top ranker from online mode and one top ranker from offline mode will be given the GS mains test series absolutely free. Okay, GS mains test series of Lukman IS absolutely free. So this is about this thing and we are going to start the <coughs> ethics case studies batch just after the UPSC prelims exam. So if you are willing to attend, you can just join this batch and also you can join the, I mean, uh, you can join the uh, recorded lecture batch to learn about ethics, uh, how to solve ethics case studies. So that's all from my side for the day. Thank you everyone for attending the session. I hope you have a good day ahead. Thank you.